So I really like this question because it re pretty much has us doing everything. Mold moles, um, molarity, everything. Uh, the question gives us 12 grams of Al2O3. So here's that 12 grams. And uh, 25 milliliters of 12 molar HCl were reacted together. And we formed 2.25 grams of water. So the first question is, given the mass or the yeah the mass of the water produced how many moles of AlCl3 were produced so from this it's important to recognize um, given the mass how many moles so I don't need to go into mass of AlCl3 I'm asked for moles of AlCl3 so I'm going to start with what I was given that I have 2.25 grams of water so if I produced that, then the most ALCL3 I could produce is going to be a multiple ratio, so stoichiometry ratio um, of the water produced. So first we gotta get water into moles, and that is, we're just gonna round up for now, 18 grams of water per one mole of water. Now I need to use my stoichiometry to get that into moles of AlCl3. So I notice I have two moles of AlCl3 for every three moles of H2O. So my H2O is going to go on the bottom, my water on the bottom. So three moles, not one. Three moles of H2O to two moles of AlCl3. Now when I put this in my calculator, I'm going to go 2.25 times 2 divided by, in parentheses, 18 times 3. That's to make sure that I'm actually getting the parts and pieces. So remember, multiplication is distributive, so it doesn't matter that I lump everything together. And divided by 18 times 3, and I get 0.0833 moles. Eight, three, three moles of ALCL3. So that answers the first question is how many moles of ALCL, ALCL3 were produced? 0.0833. So now let's do a little sanity check. I have 2.25 grams and 18 grams per mole. So let's just see what that is. 2.25 divided by 18. 0.125, and so I have 0.125 moles of water produced, and that is a 3 to 2 ratio, so I would expect that the moles of ALCL3 to be smaller, and this number is indeed smaller, so I feel good about my answer, I can move on. So then the next part is again going into limiting, so this is moles given mass of water. So then the next one is how many moles could be produced if all of the Al203 is consumed. So for that one I have 12 grams of Al203. 203 and its molar mass because that's the first thing I got to do. I have to get into the moles so I can work with things. Um, its molar mass is 101.96 grams of Al2O3 to one mole. Two O3. Now my multiple ratio. So I'm going to come up here and say I'm reacting some amount of moles of Al2O3 and I want to know how much AlCl3 I can get from that if it all reacts. So I have one mole of this to two moles of that. So I want my moles of Al2O3 to go away. So that's one mole on the bottom, one mole Al2O3. And stoichiometry tells me two moles of AlCl3 for every one mole. So two moles AlCl3 
and that'll give me moles produced. So I can double check moles of Al2O3 cancel out, mass of Al2O3 cancels out. And once again, I expect you to actually write all of this out. Not, there's no magic numbers being multiplied or divided by times two divided by 101.96. That's it. Is point two three five moles of Al Cl three. Okay, so then the next part says if all of the HCl is consumed. So this is the part where we're going to go. So this is actually let's write this out. Moles of Al Cl three from mass. mass Al2O3. So the next one is how many moles if all of the HCl is consumed. So now I look at this and I make, okay, so I have 12 molar HCl and I had 25 milliliters of that. So I'm going to talk about some of the mistakes that I was seeing and a new rule that I'm going to lay down the groundwork for on our first day of lecture on Wednesday. And that is the most common mistake I was seeing is people writing this. 12 equals, what were you writing? Moles. Ah, you're doing this. Over 25. No, 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 no. Just so you know. That little m is not molarity and it is not moles. That little m right there is mass, which is the trap that many of you got yourselves into. You said, oh, I have a mass per a volume. I have density. And even though the units aren't the same with this capital M, you went ahead and said, so this is mass, this is a volume, and that capital M is this. And so these two things are not, not related at all. I could use this to get into a mass if I wanted to get into a moles to get into a molarity, but in these, these are not the same. So because it was like, there was about 60% of you that used this equation. What you were trying to do is say mol molarity equals moles per volume or per liter is what it should be. And you didn't use any of your units. And that messed you up 10 times, kind of messed up. It was messed up. So let, let's not do that. So my rule for this quarter is thou shalt not use the capital M. And if you do, it's going to be an instant point deduction. So what I want you to do is to, if you want to use this equ equation, go ahead. But if I was going to do that for here, I would say I have 12 moles of HCl per one liter HCl equals moles HCl per volume that it was in. So this is the next trick and that's why I wanted to, I want to make you guys write this out. If you find yourself writing this out, milliliters HCl, hopefully you'll catch on that you have milliliters on this side, liters on this side, you have units that aren't going to cancel and you're going to get the wrong thing. So my suggestion is to do exactly what I was saying and not treat this as an equation. Think of it in terms of strictly a conversion factor. And let's start down here. So I have 12 moles of HCl. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the conversion to liters because that is the easiest way not to make a mistake. So I'm going to go right into liters to 1,000 milliliters because the volume that I've been given is in terms of milliliters. I have 25. So times 25 milliliters of HCl. So my milliliters HCl, actually I should go ahead and do that. That's important. 
at milliliters HCl, milliliters of HCl. So these units will cancel, so I'm in moles of HCl times. Now, the question I was asked is how much AlCl3 can I make given my starting concentration and volume? So from here, now I can go, okay, so I mold a mole. Now I'm just looking at my stoichiometry. So I have six moles of HCl to two moles of AlCl3, which is what I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that out. So I have 12 moles of HCl on top. So I'm going to have six moles of HCl on the bottom. Six moles of HCl. Two, two moles of AlCl3. And then I look, I'm like, okay, so my moles of HCl are going to cancel. I'm good there. I'm indeed going to have an answer that is in moles of AlCl3. So now if you wanted to, and some of you did, you just went ahead and uh, simplified this to 1 over 3, and that's fine. Um, just take a little care when doing that. Some people accidentally dropped uh, the 2 and left the 6. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to multiply across the top 12 times 25 times 2, divided by 1, 2, 3, 1,000 times 6. And that is point one mole AlCl3, AlCl3. So that is the most AlCl3 I can make given um, the amount present. So that tells me this is definitely smaller than the 0.235. So this is my limiting. And then from there, if I know that that's my limiting. So I asked the limiting, I asked what was the theoretical yield, and a lot of you did calculations, but just to remind you, this is the theoretical yield. Now you could go ahead and do them, and, and most of you got that part right, but remember, just because it seems like I'm, you're seeing an easy answer and therefore it must be wrong, doesn't mean that it is wrong. So ask yourself what it is that you've calculated. So what this 0.1 mole means is that if this reaction goes to its absolute perfection and uses all of the limiting reactant, then the most I'm going to get is this 0.1 moles of AlCl3. That is my theoretical yield. And in the very beginning, so my theoretical, theoretical is the 0.1 mole. In the very beginning, I said, how much did you actually make? And that happened to be in moles. So you actually made 0.083. Oops, you can't see. Sorry. You actually made 0.0833 moles ALCL3. So from there, the theoretical yield, or the percent yield, rather, is the actual divided by the theoretical. So 0.0833 moles of ALCL3, ALCL3, divided by 0.1 mole, let's go ahead and write that here, AL3, 0.1 mole, ALCL3, times 100, to give me my percentage. Now you notice my units do cancel out, so I have a unitless quantity, which is what I want. So I suggest writing this out because one of the things that I was seeing was that you were randomly dividing things that weren't the same. So if your units don't cancel out, that's a good clue that you've gone down the wrong path. And then just kind of pause and think about it for a second. And then we get here and we're like, oh, that is 83.3%. And I'm done. So I can look back at this question, um, which is the limiting, that's the HCL. What was my uh, percent yield was 83.3%. How many moles I get um, for my ALCL3. So the only question I didn't ask is how much of my L2O3 did I have left? We could have done that too if we wanted. Um, and we've answered it all. So those are pretty big things that you want to be in the habit of practicing and um, really comfortable with. Because going into labs, these have to be completed while you're in the lab class. So make for darn sure that you understand this and please, please, please come see me if you need help. Thanks.